All right, so I mentioned in yesterday's, there was a, I mean, you would have seen it on yesterday's videos, but there's the bridge that I was talking about that couldn't really see from where we were when uh, I was wanting to talk about it. Um, you know, it's already starting to go away. Um, I think over on the left, you can kind of still make it. Well, you can see the column for it, I guess. Um, but yeah, the tree cover is starting to make that a little unclear so uh, I don't actually know how well marked this Mississippi River Trail is once I get across the bridge um, or maybe actually it's not the bridge that I go oh yeah because there's the there's the thing maybe I was like under it that's why I couldn't see it I'm so confused oh no I'm not there yet so the fort the fort's larger than I thought it was. Uh, that is not the bridge. I'm wrong. That's a different bridge. I think when I told Nick we were trying to get to a bridge, I think this might have been the one. Uh, that was on a different video. But that's not actually the bridge. Um, I, don't think, I don't understand how it would... I don't know. I could just send my dollar curl around that much. I think the bridge is up in front of me still. Alright, well, maybe I turned on the camera too soon. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep peddling. <laughs> I'm gonna try to listen again, which I failed to do very much of yesterday. The regular financial world is trying to do that platform approach. So I think it would be really cool if that was implemented at scale across not just the retail banking side but also the institutional side. But that's going to be hard to do, but we're, we're plugging away at it. Cross market finance would be combined with those parties plus regulators yep. and money changers and users. users. Yes. So could you talk a bit about this consortium model that you have? Does it get difficult? You've got like over 70 members. Right. There's not a lot of cooks in the kitchen and also are there people that you still want to control who haven't yet. <laughs> yes, so it's undeniably challenging to have uh, so many stakeholders around the table, but I think that we're pretty good at it. <laughs> so, and it's, yeah, thank you. I mean, it's, it's not a science, it's an art. We realize early on we have an opportunity, and maybe there aren't too many other companies out there that could be ambitious, probably. Someone else tried it like we did. We are very focused, though, on the end goal, what is the potential for this? I mentioned before, you know, it gets us excited, we get to be excited, there's potential for this to be generational change. And, you know, an operating system for finance is a pretty big thing. So, there's a huge benefit here for a lot of folks. So, there's great, you have the benefit, or maybe the three part of it. It's also good for us that there's the, there's the, sort of the negative or the fear side of things where, if we were to attempt this three, four, five years ago, it probably wouldn't have worked. But now there's a realization that and an appetite. There's, there's a realization that banks have an intractable cost problem, and that five to ten percent optimization, five to ten percent optimization of, of the cost base would be nice. But what I mean, if you look at the numbers, compensation costs are going down, the banks, but non-com costs are going up. So if you look at the cost line, it still stays flat. So we, we potentially reach some sort of like efficient frontier of offshoring and, and efficiency gains. So there needs to be a massive step change. So that's where initially from the banks, and now it's expanded to others, including exchanges, financial market infrastructure, and others. Looking at what do they do today that they credibly could move to share service model that still protect what they're doing. I think I took this very well. Might have to uh, uh, of their organization. And the trick is walk. here, we're giving them away through this technology that they can oh, I guess I can prove that it works. But I think the big part of this is we can prove that it's actually lower than the models that they'll either continue to do it themselves or Ooh. centralizing it externally to some uh, utility. Right, so the more the merrier. That's my mantra, the more the merrier. And so far, you know, knock on, knock on wood, it's worked out really well. And I think that the institutions that we have worked with so far have been extremely engaged. And we're looking to continue to work with institutions that want to remain engaged and remain committed to a network approach and a collaborative approach. So you've signed on Ooh. more and more people, it seems like, with each quarter you announced a greater amount. But in November, you did see the departure of Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Santander. And I'm wondering, on the Arthur side, how did you interpret that? Do you see that as a proliferation and increased appetite for experimentation? This, uh, and this, realized, this is interesting. No bike sign. Or do you see it as we're going up there. fracturing within I know, think. the sphere of opinions of how just real leverage should uh, work with it? Financial there's service. a bridge. So we, we consider ourselves very, uh, very fortunate. We work really hard at it. Very fortunate. The question we is, institutions that we work with. And I mentioned before, there's a massive price for involved in the, we are at the cusp of the exchange here. So we've been very focused on maintaining that bigger picture focus. And I think part of you know, the art and science of keeping such a large group together means that we're focused there's on the greatest benefit across a very diverse set of stakeholder institutions. So we, we pride ourselves not just on working with any institutions, but geographically we're very, very dispersed throughout the world. Canada, Brazil, uh, Asia Pacific, yeah, we have two members in, in uh, South Africa, so uh, Africa, construction market. So we were really proud of that. It's very, it's actually really important for us to keep that balance. So we work with small banks, very large banks, we work with insurance companies. Uh, I'm not quite done climbing, almost. So we wanted to make sure that we focus on delivering for that process. So keeping together. 78 stakeholders, I think it's very impressive. And at the end of the day, uh, this is actually the strategy I really see best. And so we've been very pleased with the, with the outcome so far. And you know, it's a very long game as well. There's a lot going on, there's a lot of activity. Technology is, and that's why banks are bad at it, because they're focused on early returns. That was a, uh, you said it on me. But, but it, it can be. So, and I think everyone does realize that things will change. Current position strength will go away. You know, things will be rearranged. <sighs> and some banks are trying to approach it from different perspectives. So, what are your hopes for this next year as the hype of Bitcoin and blockchain distributed everything <laughs> has reached a fever pitch? Yeah. Do you see it rising still or plateauing? And in that plateau, like a column with which we can work in the land? My predictions would be, well, I, I'll tell you what I, I hope that I hope that the industry in general, when I say industry, the technology industry delivers on the promises that we have made over the last few years. That's part three and others. I think we're all in this together. I think we've all, we've all, we've all cast our lot for this. All right. 
Here is a sign for the Mississippi River Trail, the MRT. So, I can't remember what happens if you go that way. Uh, maybe I'll do that on the way back. I don't know if you know, loop around and go down there. Probably not. All right, you can't hear me when I'm going across this. So, uh, I'll just let the lovely sounds of traffic in your ears. A lot of flooding down there, it looks like. Picnic tables. So if I were to turn right, we'd have a really good view over the river of planes taking off. But I'm going to turn left up here for the first time. There's St. Paul over uh, to the left. Now on the way back, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to see Minneapolis. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Actually. I don't think this is actually the Mississippi here. Uh, I think this is the Minnesota. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's the Mississippi River Trail, but I think the Mississippi is actually. Uh, well, it, it curves, and we'll be curving to get to it. Um, I think that's where the Minnesota and the Mississippi come together, but kind of. But the Mississippi is a little more that way. Don't know that I've ever noticed those train tracks down there. I don't know if they're in use. They look pretty well maintained, really. I 
know if I've ever gone across this bridge, but what I usually do is turn left here and then turn right to go to Egan. Uh, so yeah, I'm not real sure where that goes, but it goes somewhere. And then you can see there's another MRT sign up there. Normally I would turn right and you can see there's another MRT thing. So if you do go that way, it'll it'll tell you. Oh no, the, yeah. So, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it says that way. But I don't think there's actually a trail over there. <laughs> uh, and they're interviewed sort of problems to bring transparency to have some of the processes like these. Yeah, not sure. So what is the attitude? So I'm gonna turn this off and look at the map here. 